Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ravi or uh, Ravi Raj. Uh, welcome to this talk this evening. And before I start um, and say much, I want to read you a story. Um, and it's called Apo and I. It's by an author from Nagaland called Kanato Jimo. And he's also the illustrator of this book. I'm taking the shorter route home today. Afo is moving to the city. I have to reach home before she leaves. Things are changing. And they're changing fast. I wish things would stay the same. I wish Afo would stay. We could play among the cosmos flowers, jump over puddles in the rain, enjoy cool watermelons under the hot sun, walk in the golden rice fields. These mountains, these rivers, these trees, will they stay the same? I wonder what the city is like. I wonder if Apple will miss me. But I can write to Apple. I will tell her all about my school, my friends, and Fifi. I will tell her about our plum tree when it blossoms, and Afo will write to me too. She will tell me all about the big city. I can even visit her. We will have fun. Things are changing and they are changing fast. I will miss Sappho, and I know she will miss me too. Hi, uh, my name is Ravi Raj, and this book um, is a story that Kanato wrote about his home, um, about what's happening, uh, about the anxieties of uh, losing what's around us, and the grief of uh, losing um, things about our planet. In an effort uh, to think about how to protect what we have. Uh, Pratham Books, this publication, uh, tried to do a book called, did a book called We Hope, um, Climate, Children on Climate Change. They asked a group of children around the country, what do they think about climate change? Um, and it's interesting what children wrote, but it's also really sad that children are thinking this way and they're growing up uh, having these thoughts. Some of the kids have written, climate change is the alarming result of human greed. Abhivakti Mishra, 16. There's a lake near my house which has water only during the monsoon. The rest of the time, it is dry due to the heat. Satvik, 15. Our village used to look like a forest. Now it does not look like a forest. Dilip Mashia, 13. Climate change is snatching homes and habitats away from humans 
and animals alike. Ranak Kumar, 15. My lungs are tired. At Atharva Rawat, 15. I feel insecure about my future in climate change world. If this continues, our future generations will be left with nothing. Lakshika Soni, 16. And this goes on. Children growing up with anxieties and fear that they might not have a future. But one young person in this book writes, Dear Earth, thank you for giving me a home. Purna Nama, 14. And if, as I was reading this book, I kept on thinking about what stories and what experiences these children are growing with and what stories are taking forefront that is creating this fear and anxiety, which is fair. But is it fair to only grow up with just anxieties and fear? What is it going to do to our mental health, to our bodies as we grow with these stories? And so here I am uh, thinking aloud with all of you uh, about the connections between our health and the world around us, our mental health and the world around us, and the relationship we share. And what stories uh, decide this relationship? Um, I come from an organization uh, that uh, is called Narrative Practices India Collective. We are a group of people who think about stories and how stories are influential in the way we think, feel, and act. Um, our logo is pretty interesting for today's talk. Uh, we believe in rhizomatic patterns of growth. Um, if you have, agar aapne kabhi adrak, uh, ko ukte hue dekha hai, if you have seen a ginger growing, a ginger doesn't grow in a straight line. It grows in every direction. And you cannot ever predict in what direction a ginger is going to grow into. Uh, and around a ginger lives a whole community. And we are really interested in these rhizomatic growth patterns. And we believe ki kahaniya bhi aise hi bhoomti hai. They also grow like rhizomes. They cannot be ever edited into a straight line. You cannot predict how stories can move, but you can influence them. And so for friends, uh, including me, there's Jay, Jehan Zeb, Jill, and Aditi uh, run this organization where we think about practices of stories and how stories are told, who tells them, um, who gets the power to tell them, when are they told, uh, what language is used to tell them. And so before we move ahead, I'm going to play a game. And the game is, knock, knock, what does this mean to you? And the little boy that you're seeing, uh, you're going to meet him at the end of this talk. Uh, but before that, uh, we'll start the game. So I'm going to show you an image and you have to uh, see what you're seeing on the image. Okay. So here's an image, there's a drawing. If you can either type on your, say it out loud here. What do you think you're seeing in this drawing? Uh, and what would you theme the drawing as? You can also name each of the objects or, and you can tell me the theme of the drawing. It's a school playground, why do you say so? So you can see a school playground, a building, a house. Um, it's a fair mela. Any particular thing you're seeing from the mela here? Um, what is it called? Those rhymes? I, I don't know. Some of them look like rhymes to me. Some of them looks like? You know? Rhymes, like in the mela. The, oh, yeah. The, the Ferris wheel and uh, uh, very, what is it called? The Horse uh, thingy. Okay. 
Anybody else? A village. Is what a village. Any thoughts why a village? Some kind of a, 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 a the setup houses all matches to kind of a village setup. This uh, one okay. floor and having this <laughs> slope and uh, yeah. Or kisi ko try karna yahan se. Aapko kya lagta hai? Ki kya hai? What is this drawing? <laughs> A daily routine of the kid, any particular thing that you uh, so this could be you know, their house, this place has chaos and chaos, and they used to go to the washroom, the table going to be perfect, and then you know, so whenever it's wrong, you have to have a test. So, whatever they do in their own way, okay. So, everybody gets minus marks, and nobody wins because all of your answers are wrong. This is a dog park. A park, a playground for dogs. Um, I work with kids a lot and I used to see this really little kid, four-year-old. His name is Ryan. Now he's like a 14-year-old boy. And Ryan uh, came to me one day um, saying that he loves coming to see me because he loves design that like we would play games and he would love all the games we would play and he said that can I bring my dog to play here and it was a therapy place so we didn't know whether dogs were allowed or not so I said I don't know and he said can we make a dog's park and I said absolutely yes we can make a dog's park let's design it and so we designed a dog park what you see is a house is a dog house and if you see little two things hanging from the roof of that house, one is a pouch for milk and one is a pouch for water. And there are tubes coming out of that so the dog can suck milk and the dog can suck water whenever the dog needs. In front of the house is a bean bag for the dog to chill. On the right hand, left hand side of the house is a football ground for a dog. Because according to Ryan, dogs need more reference lines than human beings. There is a swimming pool for the dogs to chill. Um, the, there's a fish inside the swimming pool. Ryan was very clear, please do not put a piranha inside the swimming pool. It better be a goldfish so that the dog can play with it. You were somewhat right that those two door looking structures are washroom, but uh, it's the men's washroom and the women's washroom because he wanted to put it, he was still figuring out words. A, the Ferris wheel is actually a, a ring for dogs to jump in and out. A, the U-shaped thing is a skateboard thing for dogs to do skateboarding. The kite-looking thing is actually a mountain climbing uh, play fun. The one that looks like a string is the steps for the dog to climb. And this one is the difficult part for the dog to climb. And I can go on. Um, I'm going to show you some images now. And you have to tell me the first word that comes to you when you see that image. It can be a feeling, a story, a thought, an object. What comes to mind or your heart when you see this image? Trekking, Himalayas. Sorry? Colors. Colors. White. So this is said cold. Cold. White. Home. Home. Ice. Ice. Mount Everest. Mount Everest. Not alone. Not alone. Happy. Mm -hmm. Happiness. Happiness. Let's see the next image. I want us to hear each other's responses as we are going. I can't open the chat for some reason. Okay. Maggie, what thing comes to you when you hear the word Maggie? Mountains. Mountains. Hot. Two minutes. 
Two minutes, yes. Yeah. Quick. Yellow. Quick. Acidity. <laughs> Hostile life. Hungry. Comfort. So there is comfort and there is acidity and there is nostalgia and there is yellow and okay, let's see the next word. Rains. What comes to you when you think of rains? Chai. Chai. Tea. Dancing. Pakodi. Or oh, the smell of the uh, soil. Pakode. Floods, yeah. Floods. Coffee. Umbrellas. Umbrellas. Yes. Fresh. Fresh. Dancing with my brother or father. Oh, how sweet. Cold. Cold. I come from Bombay, so I think of traffic first. And I think of delayed trains second. Next one. What comes to you when you look at this image? Chai. Chai. Milk. Milk. Affordability. Diabetes. Yeah, true. Affordability. Sorry? Affordability. Affordability. Absolutely. Friendship. Friendship. Village shops. Huh? Village shops. Dogs. I've often fed them to dogs. Yeah. Next one is the last one. What comes to you when you think of bedtime? Rest. Huh? Rest. 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 Dreams. Reading. Reading. Imagination. Imagination. Recover. Recover. Relax. Relax. Ghost, absolutely. <laughs> Instagram reels for me. Charge mobile. Charge mobile. <laughs> yeah. Crash to wake up tomorrow. Crash to wake up tomorrow. Most peaceful place. Most peaceful place. Sorry. Lazy. 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 Lazy, yes. And let's see. Uh, and I'm wondering, as you're hearing each other's responses, uh, from ghost to comfort, you know, from charging your phone to reading a book, um, how does this happen? Um, how is the same image, same word, getting us all to think um, of words and feelings that might be sometimes completely of the opposite end of spectrums or similar? Any thoughts on how does that happen? Perspectives. Perspectives. And what shapes are perspectives? Yeah. Association, experience. Experience. Experiences, yeah. Environment. Environment, association, and memories. and memories. Connections with what? Yeah. And so it becomes really important that it, to consider this in our conversations of mental health and ecology and its relationship is how much of our own lived experiences, perspectives, the way we have made meaning, or the way we have been forced to make meaning, influences how we perceive something. If I think of bedtime as being lazy and comfort, then I go to bed to sleep. But if I think of bedtime as a ghost, as scary, as difficult time to sleep, it becomes a hard time to go to my own bed. If I think about Parliji as diabetes, my actions towards Parliji would not be to buy it. And if I think of Parliji as comfort, as bachpan, 
I will use it um, in times when I need comfort. If I think of Maggie as acidity, which I, have, I have, I don't go to Maggie usually, or I have to think when I'm going to eat Maggie. But many people who feel it's hostile life, Maggie is almost an everyday chore. So the way we make meaning changes the way we take actions or steps. And our meaning making keeps on changing. And so one of the beliefs we hold is that we are hum sab matlab banate hai. We are constantly making meaning of our experiences. And what is helping us to make meaning is stories. Stories is how we make sense of the world around us and ourselves. Many a times they might be stories we have experienced or heard or sometimes even invisibly getting into our consciousness without our permission. And uh, so the way we are sort of becoming, hum jaise ban rahe hai, uh, it's the stories we are told and we are telling ourselves. My dear friend, uh, Alfonso, has this beautiful metaphor that when we are born as children, so almost our body's आसपास कहानियों को लपेटा जाता है ना सबसे पहली कहानी को जो हमारे आसपास लपेटा जाता है और रैप अराउंड आवर बॉडीज इज द स्टोरी ऑफ जेंडर इज दैट द लिटिल बेबी इज बीइंग सडनली टोल्ड व्हाट जेंडर दे आर एंड हाउ दे शुड बी इफ यू हैव एवर हर्ड पेरेंट्स टॉक दे विल से ओ आई वुड लव माय बॉय टू बिकम अ डॉक्टर you know uh, if two best friends have babies together and one of them has a boy and another one has a girl then they'll say hey they should get married to each other they're also deciding sexuality of these little bodies now we are all doing that the clothes that they wear the toys that they will play with so stories are constantly being wrapped uh, around these little bodies so we are the stories we tell ourselves and the ones that we are told uh, without our permission many a times. And stories have real effects. And they have real effects on people and communities. One of the story that is being told right now that is very, very strong is that mountains and oceans and rivers are just resources. Uh, that is a resource. Hai. जिसमें से हमको सारी चीजें निकाल के ले लेनी है और उसको यूज करना है दट दे आर समथिंग दैट नीड टू बी यूज एंड इट्स अ वेरी पावरफुल स्टोरी बींग टोल्ड टू अ पॉइंट वेर इन द आइडिया ऑफ डेवलपमेंट दे आर बींग डिस्ट्रॉयड एंड दे आर हैविंग रियल इफेक्ट्स ऑन पीपल एंड कम्युनिटीज अराउंड अस स्टोरी ऑफ जेंडर there's a very powerful story existing for historically that one gender is weaker than the other gender. A story that has functioned so well, a lie that continues to rule laws, actions, the way people act. And so stories have real effects. Stories ka effect bohati real rata logo ki zindagi par, hamari zindagi par, or communities ki zindagi par. And we are born in these stories. Children are born in stories of climate change, stories of anxieties of climate change. I work with a little 10 year old, who jungle mein jana bahut pasand hai, aur wo Bombay mein rehta hai. Aur ek din wo aake mujhe bol raha tha ki usko bahut maza aaya tha, wo Kanha forest gaya tha. And he came and he said, Ravi Raj, I'm going to keep on going to the forest again and again and again and again. And I said, wow, that's nice. Why would you want to go again and again? And he said, because my mother told me that in the next 10 years, this forest is not going to exist. And what was deciding the child's wanting to go back to the forest is the fear and anxiety of losing it. But the joy of being in the forest was not the story that was being part of his life. And it's interesting for me is that what stories children are being born into. Many children are also born into stories of Bombay being a city forever. Like 
that there was never a forest here. Uh, there were no indigenous people living here before. This was our land and we live here. And there were always buildings. So what is climate change they're telling? Because there is no change, this is the reality. And so we are interested in asking questions. What stories are being told about nature? What effects does it have on how we relate to the world around us? What practices are generated by these stories? If consistently, ये बोला जा रहा है कि पहाड़ एक resource है, उसमें तो minerals है जिसको destroy करके निकाल लेना है, क्योंकि उस mineral से development होने वाला है इस देश का, then the practices to bomb the mountain, to destroy it. But if the stories of how mountains are our ancestors, how they are our protectors are being told, uh, then what effect would it have? I have a dear friend, a dear person who I absolutely enjoy reading about. Uh, she runs a publishing house called Adivani, who publishes children's picture books. And they're telling stories of um, nature. There's a book that she writes called We Come From the Geese to tell where her tribe comes from. It comes from the geese. And so their relationship to the nature is not that of resources, but that of the mother, that of the God. Um, and how do you treat your mother? You don't destroy it. You love it and you care for it. And who benefits if stories of mountains as resources and rivers of resources are being constantly told? Who benefits if children are constantly feeling anxious or adults are feeling anxious about, uh, about the ecology around them? So I'm going to take you to a different part of the world. We are in uh, Tejpur in Assam and we're going to travel from Northeast to the Western coast of India to a little union territory called Dadra and Nagar Haveli. Or Dadra and Nagar Haveli uh, ek union territory hai, jahan par uh, bohat sare adivasi communities rehte hai. Uh, or um, 2017 mein humko invitation mila ki will you come to meet us because there are some things going on in our community that we are not understanding. So, Barish Shori thi mujhe yaad hai, Barish ka mausim ta, aur hum gaye, hum ko laga tha ki, jinho ne invite kiya tha, wo das aurte thi, jo ek organic self-help group chala di thi, aur unhne bola ki, aap aayye, hum se milye. Aur jab hum town hall pauche, around 120 Adivasi women were sitting and waiting for us to tell us unke communities mein kya chal raha tha. And they started telling us lists of problems that were there. And one of the biggest problem that they started talking about was suicide. Suicide of young Adivasi boys and girls in their communities. Uh, the other was abuse of alcohol. They were saying that our men, our boys are being controlled by alcohol and we can't stop them, which is giving rise to violence in our communities. This third thing that they kept on saying ki hamari ladke bike accidents mein bohat marte hai. And we were wondering why would that happen? And, and they would say because there are so many factories and industries coming up, taking our land away, giving them easy money, loans to buy bikes, and there are alcohol shops feeding them alcohol. And that is why our young people are dying. Do something about it. And so that meeting raised a lot of problems uh, and we wanted to know what was causing it. So it, we invited each village to represent, choose a woman who will come and sit with us and help us find ki kya ho raha hai. And hum ek hafta bethe aur humne charcha karne shuru ki ki aakhir kyu suicide ka range uh, Adivasi mein bad raha hai. And as we spoke and spoke, they started telling us that our relationship with our land is changing. 
हमारा संबंध हमारे फॉरेस्ट के साथ बदल रहा एंड दिस सेड कि जल जंग, जमीन और जंगल और आदिवासी एक है आप एक को संबंध तोड़ो हम सब टूटेंगे दैट आर आइडेंटिटीज आर वन इफ यू ब्रेक वन वी विल ऑल ब्रेक and that the reason of suicide and increasing abuse of alcohol and the inflow of drugs and the dying is happening because young people are moving away from the land and forest because of what's of the policies so union territory hai aur union territory ke land taxation alag hote hain unhone land taxation ko badal dala to industries or factories jo maharashtra aur gujarat aur madhya pradesh se easily land occupy kar sakte hain mostly non indigenous people and as more and more land is going away more and more people are struggling and so they said ki humko is kahani ko bolna hai ye kahani ki zameen hamare liye kya hai jangal hamare liye kya hai aur hum gaon gaon ja ke is kahani ko bolenge and so we started doing that we started going village by village inviting women men young children uh, elders to talk about what does land mean to you tell us stories of what this land has meant to you and fir har ek group apni apni kahaniyan batata hai an elder will tell a different story and a child will tell a different story and as they tell us we start drawing we start documenting uh, what these lands look like and we draw them as they draw to tell their stories and then we move from one village to the other to the other zameen apni jiwa dori jiwa dori bachao re zameen apni jiwa dori jiwa dori bachao jiwa dori bachao re zameen apni bachao zameen apni jiwa dori jiwa dori bachao जमीन आपनो जीवन से समाज आपनो कुटुंब से जाति धर्म भेदभाव नहीं अन्याय हिंसा बदलो रे समाज आपनो बदलो रे जीवन आपनो बचाओ जमीन आपने जीवा दोरी जीवा दोरी बचाओ एंड सो वी मूव दैट मेनी अ टाइम्स ओनली प्रॉब्लम स्टोरीज आर टोल्ड नो If you have ever seen a dark sky with only few stars, you can only see very few stars, and they are like the problem stories. Uh, but when you see more, and you wait patient, there is so much more to a sky. There are all kinds of stories, and they wanted to tell all kind of stories of land, of the mountains, of the forest that exist. Um, I think I'm speaking to. द राइट अगर आप स्टारी नाइट जाते हो तो वो जो लेजर लाइट रहता है द मोमेंट दे शो कनेक्ट कॉन्सलेशन इट बिकम्स विजिबल इट्स आर एफर्ट टू ब्रिंग दीज स्टोरीज विजिबल द स्टोरीज ऑफ प्लान दैट आर बींग ऑप्रेस्ड एंड हिडन एंड सब्जुकेटेड टू मेक दम विजिबल एट द फॉर फ्रंट द स्टोरीज ऑफ जॉय ऑफ वॉटर फॉरेस्ट डस्ट हाउ डू वी ब्रिंग दम एट द फॉर फ्रंट अलॉन्ग विद द स्टोरी ऑफ एंगजाइटी ऑफ लूजिंग अ फॉरेस्ट the story of water river means how do we bring that in the forefront and so uh, we think about this as reauthoring our stories creating a balance of stories that as stories of anxiety and fear grows we also grow the stories of our response to that stories of our joy to that stories of our relationship to the tree that grows next to my home um story of the little flower that bloomed when i was really sad and what it meant to me stories of the falling rain that helped me in times of sadness how do we tell these stories alongside stories of climate change and what will mean to create this balance of stories and there are some examples that i want to quickly share before i come to the end uh, i love children's picture book i'm a librarian i run a library from my home for children in my community um i love children's picture book because i feel they are like maps wo ek tarike ka naksha hai that 
invite us to worlds that we might forget about. Uh, Deepa Velsavar lives in Bombay uh, and she's an amazing, amazing woman. And she wrote this amazing book called Nani's Walk to the Park. Bombay Shahir Badalte Jata hai, and Bombay ke saad logo ka samband badalte jata hai. But Deepa wanted to tell a story of what Bombay has meant to her. The markets, the trees, the little ponds of Bombay. And so she wrote this beautiful book about a walk, uh, Nani and a little, her little grandson take through the streets of Bombay. But she has a name for each of those spaces that you'll have to read the book to find out how she wants those relationships with the city to be. Uh, there's a book called Snip, uh, again by Kanato from Northeast. Uh, and Kanato has this thing of bringing uh, the world around children uh, in a way that becomes part of their joy, their love, their fun, um, to not show it just as anxiety and fear, but also how it is important for them. It's a story of two little siblings who are left alone at home because their parents have gone to work in the tea garden and what all they do when they're left alone. This is a beautiful book called Tine and the Faraway Mountains. Uh, it's a story um, of a person who climbs the mountain. And here's something that I wanted to read. Wushu, Wushu. In the Mishmi hills of Arunachal Pradesh, Tini heard a wondrous call from the distant mountains. She was drawn to it, a sound only she could hear. I love the description of mountain that gives a sound that only she could hear that tells a very precious relationship she has with the mountain that she is going to get invited into rather than a mountain just being a, a holder of minerals. What will happen if we tell these stories um, to children, to communities, to adults around us? And so uh, the last four days was very special because we spent doing that. Uh, we met a group of youth from Greenhub, old fellows, present fellows, uh, and some women from Northeast Network to ask what's going on in Northeast, um, what's affecting uh, the young people in the Northeast, what are their strengths, uh, what is the environment around them, and how do they relate to that environment. And to, to bring this uh, talk to an end, I want to balance the story from Apo and I uh, to a story of joy about nature. And it's a story I enjoy. Um, it's the little boy you met in the beginning and I'm going to bring him back. This is the book called Hello Sun. Uh, it's by Rajiv Aip, illustrated and authored by, who lives in Bangalore. So this is a child who's growing up in a suburb of a city. Cutie. Plink, plip, plop, plip, plop, plip, plop. Hello, son. Hello, Puddle. Sorry, Frog. Hi, Slug. Salam, Snail. Good afternoon, Mr. Millipede. Good night, Touch Me Not. Took, took, took. I'm not good at this. The bird calls. How do you do, Barbit Pai? Greetings, Spider, sir. Hi there, Miss Moth. Hello, anyone there?
Hello, weird, white, wonderful, wild flower. And what would you like to be when you grow up, little seed? Hello, tailor bird nest with four tiny red eggs. I'll keep a safe distance so your parents don't get upset. Okay? Okay. Had lunch, blabber bunch. Hello, strange creature with long, pointy brown snout and loopy ears. Attack! This way, strange beast. Duck, 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 croc, croc. Chirp, 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 chirp. Hello, little mud monster. Croc. I could hear smiles and laughters in this room. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and just to remember the feeling of Afo and I and Hello Sun. And both feelings valid and both need to coexist with each other uh, because we have to balance these stories. We have to tell all kinds of stories. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We can take uh, questions. Or yeah, thoughts also. How was it for you as you were listening? What has it got you thinking? Anything you were drawn to or you remembered um, as you were listening? Or questions? No questions yeah. as such, but uh, uh, I, I just, your presentation took me to my childhood days, like uh, the village life I had for almost 16 years and uh, always uh, the, the, the lakes, the uh, garden, all these things, yeah, and the farming. I mean, I just went through all these things. I just called my son, please come here. The interesting presentation is going on and somehow he just escaped here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for this uh, presentation, uh, Raviraj. It was really interesting Thank and yeah, so much of informative. Thank you. Yeah, I, I believe that stories have this beautiful thing that they can transport us. And so stories of fear and anxieties can transport us to a different world. And stories of um, Hello Sun can transport us to... Uh, and both of them have real effects in our bodies. Because as you were remembering, you were also living those memories and how important it becomes in the time we live in to have that balance uh, or exactly. have that transport. So thank you, Praveen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. This was such a nice presentation. Just like Praveen, I was also hunting down my daughter who's uh, currently in fifth grade to come and see the presentation but I know it's being recorded so I'll try to get a hold of that um, and some of these books are also um, may not maybe not the same but I have seen similar books of Pratham and Tulika I'm, uh, I, I just love how uh, they've opened up the um, children's book uh, you know uh, arena sort of uh, for India. I, I really love that about both publishers. Um, I guess I, I wanted to see since you've been working um, with a lot of youth um, in structured ways. So I, I'm curious to know how 
youth are talking to each other, whether it is in a structured format or even outside, maybe you've just, you know, um, just because you're in that environment where you probably see more people who are having these conversations, how do they interact? Um, what do they think about, you know, climate change? Um, and I'm sure that varies uh, depending on, you know, where they are and what kind of conversations happen around them. Um, for example, my children, they know that there is climate change, but um, I guess the kind of conversation they have or uh, uh, with their peers is something um, that I I uh, I don't know. Are they really? I don't know if they're thinking about it a little bit more. Um, is it only because you're asking someone that they're responding in a certain way? Uh, or does something really play in their head in the background as well? Yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, feel the last one you know, uh, and the first one, uh, I feel like uh, that nobody, uh, not a single person or community doesn't think about the world around them. All of us do. Uh, because it's impossible to go around uh, being in this world without uh, noticing the world around us. Um, and, but it's about having that space or holding space for people to reflect and think, uh, to talk uh, in ways that doesn't create uh, anxiety or a grief to a point that leads to no action, but in a way that uh, people feel that they are taking actions. Um, and so I feel it's important. Like I feel whenever I've met youth and held space they talk about the most complex things that I hear uh, and so I really believe that children youth uh, if held space and given space of respect and dignity almost like from a belief that they have the knowledge and that they have the the uh, the wisdom they need tools uh, my friend Rita Banerjee, who's the founder of Green Hub, uh, when we met for the first time, she told me that her idea of Green Hub was to have that space where young people could have those tools to change. Um, and so, yeah, I would say that they know it. It's the holding space and giving them tools. Um, thank you, Granti. Yeah. Thank you. Just uh, to put maybe one second on that. I agree with you, um, but I, I agree that maybe whether it's schools or wherever else, maybe we give them that opportunity, not them, it's just also us as adults. I'm, I cannot say children and separate adults from that um, because I think also we think about these things, but unless there's an outlet, I think the action doesn't follow. Maybe. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Anybody here? Any thoughts or oh, something? Uh, I remember you had to see the uh, you know, environmental education as a power of all my activities. Yeah. And through your presentation, you also showed how it was possible that you could do And my I can't remember the meaning of it. Yeah. And I, I wonder who benefits out of it mm -hmm. to teach us about environment in such fearful, anxious ways. I think about sex education also. When I was uh, taught about sex education in school, it had nothing to do with pleasure. It had to do all with fear and, and scary things that could happen to you. And that has an effect on my body. It also has to do with health and body. Like I've been always trained in medical school to think of my body as a site of problems or deficits or... And so I constantly am looking what's 
not going well in my body. Uh, so the relationship I share with my body uh, or with pleasure has to do so or with environment is so much with what I've been, what stories I've been told. And so the reauthoring is really inviting those stories that are of joy, of pleasure, of my body can never be a site of problems, but it will always be a site of protest and wisdom. Uh, so how will then I have a relationship with my body? Is that I will listen to my body. Um, or I listen to the environment around it, me, because I feel that they are equals. Uh, that the hierarchy between humans and environment, that, that another story being told of supremacy of human beings is a tricky one. So, yeah. Is it okay to add something to that? Sorry. Absolutely. I was about to type, but I figured you might as well say it. Um, so recently we had uh, Pranay Lal, uh, uh, he's an author, uh, Indian author, and he writes a lot about nature and uh, the Indian subcontinent and uh, um, parasites and things like that. Um, but he was recently at IPH for uh, our oration, uh, annual oration, and he was saying the same, uh, something along the same lines about the nemesis, about the naming of things um, uh, and how that impacts the way we look at them. For example, um, Sa uh, uh, sanitary comes from the word sanity um, but that means uh, we are trying to be overtly hygienic and we're getting rid of good microbes as well as bad microbes while we are at the in the process which sort of has a an opposite effect um, eventually because you know we're uh, more prone to autoimmune diseases it just sort of shifts the balance from um, you know a uh, uh, fighting infectious diseases to fighting uh, our own self. Um, but also the point being that um, I think the, just the way names, uh, things are named, parasites uh, or, uh, you know, um, uh, pathogens, it just, it's just a bad way to think about it. Whereas, you know, they exist, they coexist with us for the most part. Um, only when, you know, when there's an opportunity or there is a breakthrough, that's when it turns into a disease. So I just remembered that when you say. Yeah. Thank you, Pranti. Absolutely. The naming. Yeah. The language. There are two more uh, comments uh, on the chat box. Uh, should I read it out? Yeah, would that like it's a question? A thought. Okay, go ahead. Um, one is by Tamara. Um, that was delightful and serious at once. Thank you, Ravi. Love the phrase reauthoring stories must be many ways in which one could explore that would would love to talk uh, would love to talk more on the subject and then uh, praveen rao said uh, and also your presentation and stories really took me to look at the climate change and its visible impact which i could measure during my childhood especially the reduction in agriculture rain greenery for photo voice and storytelling are the very effective communication methods. Yeah. If there are no more uh, questions or um, things that you want to share. Huh? There's one more question. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. So, uh, when, uh, I don't know if you can read it, but, uh, there's something about gender discrimination. So, we, we don't know if this happening, we need to do something which is that, but, uh, they, like, you know, they don't realize it, but, you know, they actually also have this mindset. 
Uh, they also have people which they might not really have made to it, but they are. Uh, yeah. Uh, one, um, I, I believe it's the relationship I share with people decides what will I do. If the relationship is really of trust and closeness and of uh, a point where we can equally give each other information or make us each other realize of things, then I would talk more about, hey, that thing you were telling me, uh, I wanted to ask more about it. Um, because for me, that looks like a, a tricky uh, discriminatory thing about gender. Uh, what do you think about it? So it's almost like an invitation I'm placing in the center, not like this is what it is. No. And I would, uh, so, with, but with my sister, for example, the way we will have this conversation is like, this is it, and we'll fight about it or whatever it is, but it's different. But with communities and uh, with individuals, I would invite them to think uh, in a very tentative way because they can refute it and say that's not okay. And maybe that's not it. Maybe I'm seeing it completely wrong. Uh, but if there is a community, like a group of people sitting together and one person says it and I hear it, I would always invite other people to say, as this person was saying these, this story, what do you think about um, this story? For them to invite each other's thinking and for me to not put my opinion uh, uh, in a way. But I might be influential. So I might say, as I was listening, I could hear uh, pieces of gender discrimination. What do you all think about it? Was it there, not there? And really, because I want that to be an invitational conversation. Um, so yeah, it really helps to invite people to reflect and think. And if they refute, but then one woman comes and tells you, no, it is not, I feel it was then our task is to increase awareness in the community. But not. I will not directly talk down to this person. And so our job will be, hey, that, let's do a library. If there's a library, then we'll do a library collection about women and about, say, queer people. Uh, and we'll intentionally put it at the forefront so people engage with that knowledge. Uh, because it really tells me that that story is subjugated about gender. And so it's almost like gender discrimination is normal. Like when I go to flights, uh, travel in planes, they will say, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. And so they are influenced by the story of gender just existing in two forms of men and women. Uh, they're completely unaware. You, So many people have complained, but they are not changing it. Uh, because that gender binary story is so true. And so it becomes our job to tell other stories, you know, stories of all genders. And like Kranti was saying, it's just the naming. If they will just say travelers or flyers, they just include everybody. Um, but then my job becomes to tell more stories of... Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Okay, we'll, I think we'll uh, wrap up. Thanks a lot, Ravi. Thank you. Uh, for this amazing talk. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>